you know, we have between 65 and 90,000 thoughts in any given day. That's a vast number of thoughts to be going through our head. It's not at all surprising then that we would begin to think that we are the last thought that we have just had or that we are the last feeling that we've just felt. And yet we're so much more than our thoughts or than our feelings. When we realize that between 65,000 and 90,000 thoughts are going through our head in any one time. We realize, of course, that they're very random too. So one moment we can be thinking, I wonder what I'm going to have for lunch. Another time I'm wondering, shouldn't I be somewhere else? Look at the time of day it is. Another can be a worry. Another can be a concern. It's all over the place. Not surprising when we begin to think that we are our thoughts, that we also begin to think that life is very confusing and confused. I want you to realize that you're infinitely greater than your thoughts would otherwise have you think you are. And so just close your eyes now, if you would, for a moment and begin to experience the truth of who you are. I want you to remember who you are, to really remember the truth of who you are. If you are to do that now and to close your eyes and just to cut all of the past away from you, no memory, no parents, no country, no background, nothing at all that you would have perhaps associated yourself with and the thoughts would have associated with those experiences. And speak very powerfully your newfound truths to yourself. I'm not my body. I'm not just my thoughts. I'm not my job. I'm not the role I play in my family. I'm not my addictions. I'm not my recovery. I'm not the judgment I make about myself nor am I the judgment that other people have made about me. I'm not the fantasy I've created in my head about myself. And yet, as you just cut all of those things away, and you might want to continue adding to the list of all the things that your thoughts would otherwise have you associating yourself with, yet it's only a thought, here one moment and gone the next. You have thoughts, you're not your thoughts. You'll begin to realize that as you cut the past away from yourself, you still are. You're here. All that you've done is actually made the associated thoughts disappear. And yet you haven't gone anywhere. Your heart is still beating. Your eyelids are still flickering. Your pulse is pulsating. You're being breathed by life itself. Isn't that a freeing discovery? That's your first glimpse of the truth of who you really are. It's a remembering, a remembering before all of those thoughts all of those associated feelings began to convince you that you are so much less than the magnitude that you truly are. You are a very, very powerful being. Of course, none of us were taught this, were we? Your parents won't have taught this to you. My parents certainly didn't teach it to me. Schools don't teach it. It wouldn't have come from a religious practice or from any cultural background that you once belonged to. In schools, all we're taught is that truth comes from an authority and that authority is outside of ourselves. That intelligence, well, it's nothing more than the ability to remember and then to repeat. That memory and repetition, well, they get to be rewarded and non-conformity is punished. We learn helplessness. 
we learn how to conform. We're learning all the time how to conform both socially and intellectually. And yet, all of the time, our natural magnitude is actually being diminished, 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 as we forget to remember the powerful beings that we truly are. And so we begin to reside at a very low energy frequency, a very low vibration. It's where fear resides. It's where ill health resides. It's where depression, repression, suppression, addiction, limitation all reside. And yet, you're infinitely greater than your thoughts would otherwise think, have you think you are. And you're infinitely greater than your beliefs would otherwise have you believe that you are. Just because you've got used to having your thoughts about something, you don't necessarily have to continue believing them. Just because you've got used to believing something about yourself, you don't have to con continue thinking those things about yourself. Here are four things that I want you to remember. Speak them to yourself. I am not and never can I be separated from the source of life that's just sourcing me, lifing me. The second thing to remember. I am all that I say that I am. I am, and whatever it is that you say after that, is in fact the declaration, the statement, the expression, the experience that you will begin to experience thereafter. So if you say, I am helpless, I am hopeless, then so you are. If you say, you, I am an addict, then so you are. If you realize the truth of your being, I am magnitude, then so you are. The third thing to remember, when otherwise you would forget to remember, I cannot not create now, we can either be creating shit in our life, absolute chaos, most of us do, or we can create magnificence. But I cannot not create. Select carefully, therefore, what it is that you are creating. And the fourth thing to remember is the meaning of life is the meaning that I give to it. Life is meaningless. It's entirely up to you how to give it the meaning you want to be the true expression that is your life. Don't wait for another soul to give you permission because you will be waiting for a very long time. Only you can give yourself back to the truth of who you really are.